get the programming right, spend time on that, make sure that the environment is appropriate for what you're trying to deliver, and then get your members excited about it. So tell a story, create a story around your brand, around the studio, around what you want people to feel. I want you to be emotional about your experience because that's what's going to keep you coming back. You're listening to episode 173 of the Fitness Business Podcast. We'd like to thank this month's premier podcast partner, Precore, delivering industry-leading cardio, strength, functional training products and service to over 90 countries across the world. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. I'm your host, Chantal, and this week we're taking a dive in the trenches to take a look at Midtown Athletic Club in Chicago. Our special guest this week is the Chief Operating Officer, John Brady. John has over 20 years of experience in the sports, hotel, and health club industries. In his role, he oversees all areas of business operations for Midtown's eight locations across the US and in Canada, including today's main focus, their newly renovated club in Chicago. I had the chance to visit Midtown Athletic in October of last year, and having seen the way that they've seamlessly integrated their boutique-style studios under the one roof of a large-scale facility is really, really special. So I wanted to invite John on the show to learn a little bit about their journey, how they've integrated third-party brands into the club, how they've been able to have these boutique-style studios with a very distinct individual brand for each, And also John shares his advice for anyone looking to introduce a similar setup in their own facility. Now, there's just one more thing. Make sure that you keep listening after the main interview today, because I'm going to be chatting to next week's guest for the Precor Quick Fire Five. And that guest is none other than Eric Fisher, the social media manager for Social Media Examiner. If you're wondering why I'm so excited about that show, well, Eric's going to be taking us through a heap of apps to help us with productivity, creativity, getting organized, and plus some other very, very cool systems that I think you're all going to love. I cannot wait for that in next week's show, but for now, here is a quick message from one of our podcast partners. Precorp provides a total solutions approach to fitness. With new equipment, smart product innovations, and new finishes and upholstery options, to the best-in-class group training and networked fitness solutions, they have a solution for everyone. To learn more, just head to www.precorp.com forward slash fitness business podcast. Let's transition now to this week's special guest, the Chief Operating Officer of Midtown Athletic Clubs, John Brady. John, welcome along and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thanks very much, Chantel. Happy to be here. Very excited. Now, before we actually dive into this week's topic, do you want to start by just giving us a brief overview about Midtown Athletic Clubs and specifically tell us about Midtown Athletic Chicago? Oh, absolutely. Love to. Um, So Midtown Athletic Clubs is a family-owned premium uh, health club facility based out of Chicago in the uh, United States. Uh, we opened our first club in 1970 as an indoor tennis club. In fact, we were first, our first name was the Tennis Corporation of America. And we were built um, predominantly or originally to grow the game of tennis. And obviously we have, we have developed over the past 45 years. We've added clubs, added facilities, made uh, changes and adaptations to all of our clubs, uh, the most recent being the, I, I think, what would be called the world's first and largest premium sports resort, which is Midtown Chicago. And I'm, I'm hoping we can continue to share what we've learned and share what we're still learning about what we've created. You know, it's a 600,000 square foot premium sports resort, and there really isn't any other way to describe it. It's uh, it's all about the member experience. It's all about what you see, what you feel, what you hear, what you smell. All of the senses are taken into consideration on the get-go. And and as such, it has a, a, a dynamic flow and a natural flow through it that, uh, that people just seem to really enjoy. 
Well, John, you know, you just said in there that one of the things that you like to do is share what you've learned. And obviously, it's, it's been an amazing journey throughout this process and the evolution of, of bringing Midtown Athletic to where it is today. And one of the things that really stood out to me was the experience that I had walking through the club and seeing the boutique style spaces I don't know if you call them if you've got a word from studio spaces within the facility I mean it was quite unique that I could walk into the yoga section and feel completely immersed within that section or walk into everybody fights and just feel like I was part of a, a smaller club within the club so that's what I would love to talk to you about today the first thing I'm hoping to understand is how did you go about choosing which brands to actually bring into the club? So we, um, um, we, we spent a long time, this club's been a long time in the making and, and the development of it, and we spent a lot of time researching uh, and visiting and uh, trying different classes and different boutique studios around the world. So we literally spent probably the best part of two years um, in and out of every studio concept uh, or boutique studio concept in the United States, uh, it's across Europe, some in Australasia as well, um, just so we could find what were the best in class um, experiences. And, and that's what a boutique does very, very well. They look at the experience from the moment you walk in. It's very specific. It's very tailored to that modality. So if you're into, if, it, if it's a yoga studio and it's a boutique yoga studio, there's a certain essence, there's a, might be a smell, there might be a feel, there might be a texture um, to your um, journey, uh, but it's all to do with uh, the yoga modality that you're about to undertake or you're about to experience. And so we spent a lot of time looking at all of those uh, different experiences and working out whether there was ones that we could utilize or whether the ones we could redevelop or, or in fact design ourselves. I mean, some of the boutique studios within the club, we've we've built the studio from the ground up and we've built the programming as well that goes within it. And uh, both are equally import as important because it doesn't matter if the facility is fabulous and the programming is poor, then you're going to get a very, very inconsistent message across to your, to your customers. And we wanted to make sure that the facility was great and the programming was great. John, for anyone that hasn't been to Midtown Athletic Chicago or they haven't had a look on the website, just run us through each of those areas that we're talking about now. Because I mentioned um, the yoga room, which I know you've got a, a specific name for it, and everybody fights. Can you just quickly list through those specific areas? Absolutely. We um, So the yoga studio you mentioned is called Samadhi. Samadhi is the ultimate state that you're looking to achieve in, in yoga. So glad to that. We have a cycle studio called Ride, which we developed along with Precore and uh, Spinning, and we use their products in there. We have a, a group fitness studio, which is called The Theatre. Uh, it's designed around, funnily enough, a theatre. The instructor's mm -hmm. on stage. It's lights, camera, action um, in there. We have Everybody Fights, which is a boxing and fight-style boutique studio. Uh, and we also have um, The Field, which is a – huge turf zone uh, which we run um, multiple classes on and we utilize that as a studio a boutique studio in, a, in and of itself uh, we also have queen x a studio uh, which we use obviously for a lot of functional training classes and small group programming Excellent. I'm actually going to include some photos in the show notes so everyone can jump on and have a look at each of those areas because I think one of the things that I really felt and I mentioned it earlier was just how immersed you feel going into each of those sections and I think that's you know you said it it's it's not just the look but it's also the smell and the feel and the atmosphere and the the trainers that you've got within each section so I'd like to talk about that John I mean with so many variations under the one roof whether they be external brands or brands that you've created how do you actually go about having them stand alone but still having the flavour of mid Ten Athletic obviously run throughout the entire facility? Um, that's a great question. Um, we 
decided that we were going to have these. We, well, what, one of our premises was to out boutique the boutiques. So, so we had to get very deep in what they did very, very well. And, and the things they do very well, the members align themselves with the, the branding and the, um, the programming, the instructors. So and the, the rise of the instructor has been a, a phenomenon that's been happening over the last three or four years through the boutique studios as they promote rock star instructors. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had to get our instructors up to, up to the same level or, or better with education training, with the programming and building the programming in. And it was, it was part, of the, part of the upside is also to do with the, the branding of the studios themselves and the merchandising. So each of the studios has its own name, obviously its own brand, its own logo, its own merchandise, and each of those areas unique within the club. So, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that each studio could live on its own if it had to. If this was something that was in the, on, a, on a street, on a high street or a main street somewhere, it could live by itself and it could be profitable and it could be successful. And so we went into it with that mindset. John, a couple of questions in relation to that. So you mentioned about the investment that you've made to really replicate those those rock star instructors. Do your instructors cross over multiple brands or multiple departments, or does a um, a ride instructor just do ride? They don't do other programs, or do they? Are they multidisciplined? They are multidisciplined. We have a number of them that are. I think this is one of the great opportunities within the industry. The hybrid instructor mm-hmm. or the hybrid teacher has so much more to offer than just somebody who's only interested or capable or, or has a desire to do one thing. So we have crossover because one of the reasons we and one of the reasons for that is we want our members to cross over. Right. We don't want members to just do to just use ride. We don't want them to just use Samadhi. We want them to use everybody fights. We want them to use the field. Uh, and so encouraging members to make use of, and this is one of the, the benefits we have is we have all these boutique studios, but we also have another boutique studio, not down the road, around the corner, you know, around, the, uh, around the fire, the, down the staircase. Yeah. There are other options and other things to use, and we want people to have that, that opportunity to, make, to make, the, make the most of those studios. John, just in that, you just mentioned merchandising. Now, you said that you have different merchandise for each of the different departments or areas or, or boutiques within uh, Midtown Athletic. Is all of that merchandise sold under in one retail store? Yes. So we have it in a we have a, a retail store, a boutique, funnily enough, store in the in the club and. Uh, It has each merchandise for each studio, each boutique, whether it be shirts or leggings or socks or um, the cycle gear, for example. We have casual clothes, some of it branded with messages on it, logos, and and members love aligning themselves with those studios and with those those boutiques. So it makes a it it brings everything alive for uh, for members. You know, there is a um, logo on the. Each all of the merchandise, but it's very small and it's very you know, it's in a, in a small out of the way place where yeah you know, the the boutique brand lives and breathes by itself. Now, one of the questions that I'm sure is on everyone's mind as they're listening is in relation to how you actually do your membership pricing or how you charge because I'm interested to know is do the members have one set fee for utilizing everything? Are there any additional costs that they pay to go to to each of the boutique kind of areas within the club? Are you happy to dive into that a little bit for us? Absolutely happy to. One of the benefits we see is that this is all inclusive. So you have the opportunity uh, with one fee, a, mem- a monthly membership fee, to use all of the facilities, and um, and we don't want to uh, limit our members. So, you know, I think with the boutiques, one of the things that uh, the boutique fitness industry has done for those of us who are in the in the bigger box or the bigger club space is it has put a price on group fitness. And for years, that has not that's been difficult to sell to members and say, look, you know, you get 120 classes a week or whatever it is. I mean, the Midtown. Chicago Club has 215 classes free on its Group X timetable. 
And we were never able to really quantify that or, or show members the value. Now with the boutiques are charging $25 or $30 or, or $35 a class, you were able to say, well, you know, if you're doing Soul Cycle or you're going to Barry's Boot Camp or you're going to Orange Theory, you know, you're paying $30 a class for those classes. How many times do you go a week? You know, I go twice a week. Okay. You could do the same thing here for less money than you do with the boutiques and you get great locker rooms, you get great amenities. We've got the boutique store. Uh, we've got a, we have a great restaurant, swimming pools, indoor and outdoor with pool decks, adult roof decks, party space, uh, all sorts of other things thrown in um, effectively for nothing. It really is a one-stop shop, isn't it? It is absolutely a one-stop shop. John, with so many advancements in in the renovation that you did last year for, for Midtown Athletics Chicago, one of the things I'm interested to understand is the technology within the club when it comes to membership retention. So do you partner up with any brands uh, in relation to things like um, performance, heart rate monitoring, that type of thing? Um, sure. We use, um, an, and we use a number of different providers for different things, but technology has been a key part of uh, what we've built into this club. We use a RFID system called uh, by Gantner out of Austria to track member usage uh, for members to register, use classes, come in and out of uh, the club itself, lock lockers, um, so electronic locks in the locker rooms. And, and also to register on the cardio machines. So members want to use the cardio machines, they have to use their RFID wristband to, um, to the one-time login, um, remembers your Spotify account, your um, Netflix account, Hulu account, whatever it might be that you want to set up and allows you to go back in and it's customized for you, uh, personalized for you. So we use that. We also use MyZone as a, as a heart rate monitoring program. We built our own program around my zone called voltage uh, which is a heart rate uh, high intensity interval training program using heart rate as a, as a methodology uh, which is super successful we also use uh, some systems with pre-core and their previous system in our cycle studio uh, which is around watts and, and power uh, tracking so you know there's a there are multiple technology uh, aspects of this club, but, but the most important, I think, is is how it ties together. We have a, we've built our own CRM platform called Me360 or Member Experience 360, and uh, what it does is allows us to, to uh, monitor every member's usage, usage behavior and patterns, uh, spend behavior, because effectively the club is a cashless society. You can pay for everything and charge to your account. That is just amazing, John. I'm so glad that we talked about that because that really does, that technology that you just stepped us through really does enhance that member experience. And as you say, being in a, a cashless kind of environment and having that technology to partner up really enhances that member experience. So thank you for diving into that. And of course, you said two of my favorite words in there without any prompting. One of those words was pre-core and the other word was my zone. So <laughs> without, without oh, any prompting whatsoever. So, <laughs> But I can't believe that I missed voltage when I was in there because high intensity in my zone is uh, two of my favourite things. So I'm going to have to come back for a visit and, and take part in that, I think. Absolutely. You'll have to come back. You'll be our guest. Yeah. Now, I've got one last question that I'm hoping we can finish off today, and perhaps you can leave us with three tips that you would share with other club owners or managers that are looking to introduce either third-party brands or um, specific boutique-style programs within their club. What recommendations would you give? That's a great question, Chantal. I think one of the keys to it is making sure that you're programming, whether or not it's a, a third party or whether you're developing your, the, the programming by yourself or with your coaches and trainers is a great, is great quality. It's got, to, it's got to meet the needs of the members that you're trying to target. So if it's high intensity interval training, it's got to be high intensity interval training. Don't make it high intensity steady state or don't make it um, low intensity interval training. You know, don't be afraid of, of, of making sure you hit the demographics with that, uh, that programming. The other thing I would say is create an environment that 
is suitable for that program. So many times I've seen people try to do boxing programs in what is effectively an office. You know, with uh, there is no environment, there's no experience, there's no atmosphere, there's no energy. And, you know, it doesn't take a lot of money to transform a room into something that's more appropriate for a or a boxing class, for example, or, or a, a fight club type class. It's like cycling. And we, we all look at cycle studios and go, well, that's a great cycle studio because it's dark, it's got some flashing lights. But you wouldn't think about doing a cycle studio necessarily in, you know, in, a, in what is a room that's ineffective. So take that same concept and apply it to each and every space. A good example is the Theatre the Group Fitness Studio at Midtown Chicago. You know, it's got a stage. There's no mirrors because when you go to the theatre, there are no mirrors. And so we, you know, we've had people comment to us, well, you know, why are there no mirrors behind the instructor or so I can see myself? We're like, you know what? We don't think you need to see yourself. We, we want you to enjoy the experience, have fun. The rock star's on the stage. Your, your focus is on the rock star and the flashing lights and the, the nightclub-esque feel is what you're there for. And we want you to feel it. We want your emotion taking over. We want you to be, be able to emote about your experience in the studio. So creating that environment, again, it doesn't take a lot of money. It just takes thought and, and a commitment to buying into what you're trying to what you're trying to create. I think those are, that, those would be the big things, I think. You know, get the programming right, spend time on that, make sure that the environment is appropriate for what you're trying to deliver, and then get your members excited about it. You know, tell a story. Create a story around your brand, around the studio, around what you want people to feel. I want you to be emotional about your experience because that's what's going to keep you coming back. And I think that story, that environment and that programming linked together that's that's the magic that's genius if you can pull it off it's absolute magic I think it's really special that you mentioned the story there John because one of the things that really stuck with me and that wasn't from being a member that was literally from doing a tour of the club was the the passion that yourself and the team members all had about the story about the club and, and that really, I think it really stirs up emotion and it's something that we can't underestimate when we're speaking to our members and, and especially in a transformation like you've just gone through. So I want to thank you for including that as one of those final takeaways because I think that's, that's a really important part of it. So, John, look, this has been so great really taking a look kind of behind the scenes of Midtown Athletic Chicago. So thank you so, so much for joining me on the show. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. The Fitness Business Podcast is very appreciative of our podcast partners. Here's a quick word from one of our partners. Active management members receive four resources every month to help them lead their business and make their life easier. Check out some samples at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. They are free. That is www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. Precore Quick Fire 5. This week's Precore Quick Fire 5 guest is Eric Fisher, the social media manager for Social Media Examiner. Eric, I am so excited to welcome you along to the Fitness Business Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. Let's kick things off with the Precore Quick Fire 5. Tell everyone, why do you do what you do? Well, I do what I do because I know how much of a struggle it is for people to get things done and to, uh, you know, focus and <laughs> feel yeah. like you're having forward momentum. So I dig into, uh, you know, talking with people on my own personal show, as well as, you know, learning from people in my day job at Social Media Examiner, uh, trying to figure out how things work, why things work and, and helping people, you know, move forward, you know, in their marketing life and in their productivity. That is awesome. And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? I take time every morning to refocus. I do uh, a couple of different morning routine rituals. I guess ov overall it's one ritual, but it's, it's comprised of a bunch of different things where it's, you know, getting up and hydrating first thing in the morning, drinking yep. a giant glass of water, um, taking time to journal and do exercises and 
uh, just kind of, you know, get the lay of the land and, yeah. and make sure that I've got my day in check. It's a bit of a morning ritual. Yes. Yeah, that's so cool. And tell us, I know you know so many apps and systems, but what is <laughs> one in particular that you use personally to stay in control of your workload? I am all about the getting things done system by David Allen. (laughs) It's just, it's just foolproof. Like it's all about capturing what needs to be captured. It's about revisiting it, doing a weekly review, and even then going into higher horizons where you look further out, like a week at a time, a month at a time, and a year at a time, and even, you know, even further than that. And by being able to kind of get that scope and those different views, you can make sure that you're on top of things. Yeah, look, I think most people should be familiar with uh, Getting Things Done by David Allen, but we will definitely put a link to that in the show notes as well so uh, people can check that out just in case they haven't already. And tell us, what's one book, podcast, you're allowed to say your own, or blog (laughs) that you would recommend and why? Well, I do like everybody, you know, checking out my own podcast, The Beyond. Yeah, tell everyone, tell us. (laughs) Yeah, uh, the Beyond the To-Do List podcast, I've been doing it now for almost six years, been having great conversations with people, picking their brain and learning how they do what they do and how they do great work and and honestly just digging into these productivity tips. And and again, it's called Beyond the To-Do List because it's all about branching out into all the topics that affect productivity but aren't necessarily usually associated with productivity. Can I just say personally, congratulations, because six years of podcasting is a lifetime. Yes. (laughs) Yes, it is. Achievement. How many many shows is that, Eric? Uh, it's, so I've taken a couple of, you know, very brief hiatuses. So, but it's, it's in the, you know, mid 200 plus range there. So. Wow. That is phenomenal. Congratulations. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Tell everyone what the main topic is that we're going to be chatting about in next week's show. So we're going to be talking about must have, must use apps, like my go-to stuff for getting, staying organized, getting creative, being creative, you know, saving you time and just, you know, some cool ones, ways to, again, apps to help you be productive and and be creative and, and get stuff done. I am ridiculously excited about this episode. So let's get straight into it. Eric, thank you so much for joining us for the pre-core quick five, five questions. Thank you. Before we say goodbye for today's show, a very quick reminder that all the resources, the links, and of course, a transcript for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. I might also mention that I've included some photos in there as well of Midtown Athletic Chicago. So make sure that you jump on and take a look at those too. Thank you so much to our foundation partner, Active Management. They have an incredible offer for each and every one of you. Their number one selling checklist is yours completely free. It'll turn your About Us page on your website into a lead generating page. All you need to do is go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active for the free download. Thank you so much for joining me for another week of the show. I look forward to seeing you next week. And remember what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. 